Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. Somebody sent me this and asked how you could draw this in Corel. It would take a little bit of work, but I, I've kind of done it, just kind of playing around with it, uh, using the duplicate key. Uh, it's not exactly as good as that, um, but it's pretty close. And so what I'm going to draw is an ellipse. I'm going to go ahead and hit P, put it in the center of the page. And then while holding down the control button, I'm going to move it up. And then I'm going to control D and make a duplicate, click on it, move the center rotation to the center, make sure it's there and it's there. And I'm going to rotate it 15 degrees. Try to make it a little bit different this time. You just need something to visible by 360. I'm going to group that together, control G. And then I'm going to go control D to make a duplicate holding down the shift key. I'm going to bring it in. And then I'm going to double click on the X right here and I'm going to rotate it just ever so slightly. And then what's neat about this, I'm going to go control D and it put it smaller and smaller and smaller. The only problem is it's getting, um, spacing apart. So if you wanted to do it, you know, more for real, uh, you could quite possibly do that. And let's just back up one more time and then just kind of do them individually. It might even be better to have a line set up, but I'm going to control D holding down the shift key to bring it in and then click on the X here and rotate it. See, those are a little bit closer and then you could control D and what you could actually do is leave that one and hold down the shift and bring it out a little bit and then control D and bring it in, holding down the shift, which is pretty important. Double click on the, uh, whoop. double click on the uh, rotation and because it's in the center, it'll follow along. I got that one a little bit too close. So hold down the shift and bring it in a little bit. And that's good enough. And then I can go control D and do the same thing over and over and over, but you have to keep clicking on it. So the other way, to, and that was a little bit off, but see, you could keep going and that's pretty close. And then to make it kind of look like that, all you have to use is a book, uh, use a smart fill tool set on black, and fill that in and you get a pretty close. And if you did it, it would take you a little bit of time. There's really no automatic and then take away the outline. The other way to do it, which is pretty cool, would be to use the blend tool. And I'm gonna, but the blend has the same problem. I did this one with the blend. You can see the further they get, uh, they are going in a circular pattern. So what you need to do is draw that arc. I'm just going to use this two, three point curve line from that center and go about right there. And then I actually double click on it. And that wasn't really a problem, but I'm going to give it a curve. And then I'm going to take the shape tool and get the handle and make it kind of more of a, more of a curve. Just kind of, kind of go to that center. Now we can draw two ellipses and then hit the plus key on your keyboard, move this one away and then make it like 25% the size. So you, now you have two. We're gonna go to effects and blend, double or select both those. Let's blend it 15 times, hit apply. That might not be enough, but we're gonna new path, put on the path and blend along full path. Yeah, you get pretty good, but we're we're running into the same scenario that these are closer together. So you could fix that. And what we can do is select everything, go up to object and break the sub, break the objects apart. And you could keep your line for right now to give you some reference. But what we can do is we could make it so we need to go to object and break the blend apart or ungroup it. And then you could slightly move that one up the chain 
you know, make another one. And you'd want to, and I'll show you in just a second, we'll just kind of move them. Whoop, don't grab. So that, you probably have to break the blend apart. So if you've got them closer together and kind of spaced them out, and if you zoom in, you can get that thing right on that line because it should snap to that edge. Now we've already broken them apart and we could keep going, uh, you know, to that intersection. But since we don't need that line anymore, now we could delete this line. And I'd go ahead and group this together, control G. Let's zoom in a little bit. And then take your pick, pick tool and control D and make a duplicate, but then make the rotation off this center. And then we're a little bit off on the degrees. So what we can do is we could do plus 12. That didn't work. Okay, now we're back to zero. So we're gonna control D and make a duplicate, rotate it 12 degrees, control D all the way around. And you kind of get that same effect uh, since we had to move those I think it's pretty close. You know, I could have put more in the center. Take our rectangle tool. And don't just fill it in with black, because if you do that, it'll all be black. But by using the Smart Fill tool, it won't go in those circles. And then I would select it all and take away the outline by right-clicking your mouse. That's pretty close. We didn't go as far. This goes like to an down into infinity to a little bitty dot. It's actually too blurry, but it's kind of weird when you zoom in and out. Let's see if ours does that. Yeah, look at it. It almost looks like it's rotating. Anyway, I hope that helped them a little bit. Thank you for watching.